Check this out. I have actually never seen one in the metal. All I've ever seen is in posters or in magazines and stuff like that. That is a 1980 Ferrari 512 BB, but it's a Koenig one. So it's got all this special stuff on it, a very highly spec car. So this is the sort of stuff that's available here at Salon Preve London at the Royal Hospital in Chelsea. That's an extraordinary event. The best thing about it is the sun is shining. There are some sensational cars. The crowds are now coming in. As you can see, there's lots of people behind me now. When we first came in, there weren't that many people, but now this place is really packed out. The weather's got a lot to do with it, but also the cars from the classics to the vintage to the latest electric cars and hyper cars, they're all here. So let's take a look around. Let's see what this show is all about. A brown car. So this is the first in the UK. Um, Brabus Germany haven't even built based on this model at the moment. Uh, they gave us a hard task of building it in the UK. Uh, we've only completed it yesterday. Uh, so I hope you guys really like it. So as you can see, the full front end has been changed. Uh, got a lot of carbon fibre running through aerodynamics. So all this is a full new section on the front end. We've got a little detail on this red section here. You can pick any colour and we can sort of customise that to the customer carbon fibre inlays. Comes on the 24 inch Z4 alloy wheels. We've got the Brabus braking system. Uh, this is actually based on the SV, so it's the top of the line for Land Rover. 4.4 uh, V8, 615 bhp. It's had all the interior done, uh, diamond stitched. At the rear of the vehicle, you've got a full carbon diffuser, sports exhaust, carbon rear spoiler. Uh, I'm James, I'm the sales manager at Super Futura and we brought a little selection with us today. Uh, we've got the Yesco, which is the latest release from Koenigsegg. Um, this was the first car in the UK and the uh, owner has kindly let us borrow it for this event. Um, and then behind we've got the Regera, which has got um, effectively one gear, so it'll go 0 to 255 in one gear. Um, and then in the far corner, we've got an Agira N, which is a one of one um, bespoke car from 2011. So a nice range of cars from different eras. Built with a driver in mind, engineered for real drivers is our campaign line. And it absolutely delivers on that as well. So there's a couple of things that really dial the driver into the car and bring that sort of passion for driving back. And like I say, that's the focus of it. It really is a leap forward in the second generation, or well, the second car in the next generation of Aston Martin following DB12. The huge change and something that I know a lot of you will be most excited about is the new interior on the car as well. And the interior is completely new. There's been no carryover at all from the previous car. We have a touchscreen for the first time in Aston Martin following DB12, which everybody was very excited about. Um, but it's been completely designed in-house as well. So it's not something that we've borrowed from another manufacturer. It's completely new. And as well as the performance being class leading, the interior is now finally as well class leading as well. So we're celebrating 50 years of the uh, 911 Turbo, uh, launched in uh, 1974. Um, it's been a mainstay of the Porsche um, lineup since then. Um, we've got uh, two models on display here um, as part of our stand uh, this year. We've got obviously the 911 Turbo, 992, um, and we've also got a Taycan Turbo S, um, which is um, kind of um, been put in to kind of showcase how the turbo has moved on from purely uh, an actual engine component effectively in the original uh, in the original 911s it's moved on into almost becoming a brand in its own right and that's filtered through to a lot of the products within the Porsche range so that would include obviously the turbo uh, iterations of the KN uh, and many other models uh, within the Porsche range so got 50 turbo 911s coming in a couple of hours well no even so they'll be coming shortly so everything well, from a, the first 933 litre all the way up to a 992 S yeah and everything in between wow. so uh, that's going to be one hell of a sight. Should be incredible, yeah. So yeah, enjoy and um, yeah, th these two cars here. This one's finished in Arctic grey, uh, and the uh, the Taycan is in jet black uh, metallic, um, 0 to 60. Porsche are quite conservative on their numbers, but you're looking at 2.5 to 2.8 seconds on these cars. 
Um, this is the Taycan here. Isn't the isn't the newest Taycan, which has just been announced. So this is a model year 24. The new Taycan we haven't yet uh, got into centres. I'd have loved to have brought it along, uh, but we're, we're getting that in the next month or so. But two models here, which are um, absolutely the pinnacle of, of Porsche engineering. We are delighted to be back here once again to kick off the couple season. Today is a very special day for Rolls Royce. We've got two fantastic commissions showcasing the very best of us both. Starting behind me, we've got an ice arctic white ghost, which has got an amazing and captivating interior, Iceland moss and mandarin. And then over the other side, we've got Spectre. Spectre was launched at the end of Q4 last year. It is our first all electric car. Um, sitting on 23 inch wheels, the largest ever fitted to a Rolls Royce. We have a beautiful expression of Spectre, dark emerald with Iceland moss inside. Do come take a look later. We'll be here for the three full days of the concourse and kind of the expressions of luxury that we have today. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great few days. We have two amazing products on stand today. We have our first and our last. We have our last internal combustion charge, the Amira, which is a fantastic car. We have also our first electric hyper SUV. Please, if you haven't seen these cars, come and visit us throughout the day, in the next three days. Also, we have an amazing brand center in the heart of Mayfair, opposite to the Ritz. If you haven't been there, please come and see us. We would love to come and welcome you, talk about cars, talk about Lotus, heritage, and what we stand for. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. The, the, the electric here just rewrites the rule book, doesn't it, for SUVs? This is a, it's the first phrase, the first hyper SUV. It's the first a hyper SUV. Yeah. It's all inspired into our, our halo car, which is the Avaya. So you see this line of the super sports cars that comes from the bonnet all the way to the back. That defines what we call it, hyper SUV. And it looks like a, it is an, a massive SUV, but once you drive it, it drives like a small car. So yeah. I would invite you to drive it. Well, three versions, 600 horsepower, all the way up to 905. Absolutely. I'm on the top one. 100 kilometers in three seconds. <laughs> A 2021 uh, ushered in a new era for Maserati with a complete new product uh, portfolio. And it started off with the MC20, our halo car. And you can see on my left here, the next version, which is the MC20 cello convertible. Um, 630 horsepower, 12 seconds to open the roof. And you can turn the roof from opaque to transparent uh, with the flick of a button. Um, following 2021, we've seen a year-on-year -year increase every year in sales, and that's been um, due to the plethora of new model introductions, um, and most recently the Gran Turismo and the Gran Cabrio. And we have an example here of Gran Turismo. This is in the uh, ICE format, so 550 horsepower. This is actually the Prima Seri uh, version of it in a Nero Cometa texturized paint, so come and have a close look. It's an interesting one. Um, and then behind me here we have the Grecali. The Grecali is our first mid-size SUV. This is the Trofeo version. Um, but of note, we have recently launched the first luxury mid-sized fully electric vehicle, which we call Grecali Fogre. Fogre stands for lightning bolt in Italian. And that is the start of our um, uh, product offensive. We now have battery electric vehicles in Gran Turismo, in Grecali, and on Monday, just a couple of days ago, we launched the new um, Gran Cabrio in full electric format to the world as well. And that will be in the showrooms in the coming few months. So we're really excited about that. So I'll leave you just to say, we are now fully electric. And by the way, 2025, this becomes fully electric as well. This is the Cyberster. It is a car that we've pretty much been showing now for almost a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was first unveiled publicly at, at Goodwood uh, last year, um, and we're now very, very close uh, to getting it on sale in the UK, so really, really exciting. When will that be, do you think? That's a great question. I think we're pretty close. Um, we want to get the orders open as soon as we can, because we know we've got lots and lots of people that have expressed interest, lots and lots of people that have already placed speculative deposits and dealers that are saying to us, when are you going to open the order? So I think 
hopefully by the end of the month, we're, we're, we're pretty close. It's 100 years of MG, isn't it? And, you know, as a man in his 50s, I can remember the, uh, the old MG midgets and the MGBs. I mean, this is the latest, the current, the modern day interpretation of the two-seater sports car that MG was basically famed for, isn't it? It, it is. I think it, it definitely has a nod to the past, but it has its uh, focus very much on the future because, of course, the big difference with this car is it's all electric. Um, you know, MG, we've had a real meteoric rise in the UK the last three, four years. You know, we sold 81,000 cars in the UK last year, having sold just under 19,000 in 2020. So really, really, really big sales figures. But this is a, a very big departure, if you like, from the, the modern uh, interpretation of MG, but one that's really, really exciting for us. It is. I mean, just on the numbers, you've got single motor, dual motor, 308 horsepower, 537 horsepower, the fastest one is hit 60 about three, so three seconds, heard it. So it's a proper performer. Oh, it's terrifying! Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've driven this extensively, um, and when you put it in super sport mode, you put the launch control on, and you just literally hold on. It is sensational. And it's the perfect configuration. Is it two seater, long bonnet, short back, a lot of power. Absolutely, and it makes you feel great when you drive it. You really, it's, it's an absolute feel good car. You drive it. Um, you know, the performance is incredible, it looks amazing. Designed in London, got to say, so big nod to our design studio. Just um, down the road? In Marylebone, absolutely, in our head office. So, so they came up with the dream uh, and they designed it um, and obviously, you know, the results are here for everyone to see. Welcome everybody, welcome to Polestar. Um, exciting time for us as a brand because we're coming this year with not one, but two brand new SUVs, both of which start customary deliveries in the summer, so we're taking orders for both of them. The new arrival, the Polestar 4, um, very much the SUV coupe, the fastest Polestar that uh, we've ever produced, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, uh, 400 kilowatts, which for the less initiated is around 536 brake horsepower, um, and uh, not only that, but you're also getting 360 miles of range, so uh, very excited. One of the things to note about this car is there is no rear window on this car. Instead, you've got a digital display that gives you far better definition, far better viewing in the uh, in the dark. So something for you when you've done your tour to come back and have a look in. Uh, it's a working system, so you can see how what that does for you. But very excited about it. Great news for the brand. I mean, we've had a big year. Um, there are now 26,000 Polestars driving around on the roads in the UK. And we know that with these two SUVs coming, very, very exciting year ahead of us at Polestar. So very glad that you could be here to enjoy it for yourselves, because this is our first public showing of the car anywhere in the UK, outside of one of our showrooms. The press are calling this the Superstar, Polestar Superstar, aren't they? Yeah, they are. The, 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 the initial press reaction, the, the first drives that they've done on prototypes have been absolutely fantastic. Um, I think one article that said, if cancel your order for the Porsche McCann and buy this. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, we're hugely excited and you know, even the sun's come out for us as it always does at the Salon Privé as I know. Um, we so have a direct line, here. don't worry. It's great to have you here. Thanks, great to so be here. All of the cars on the Concorde classic car set area are presented by dealers and restorers themselves and they are all for sale. I'm not gonna to say too much because I don't know too much, but William, this is a 17 million pound specially curated collection of vintage Bentleys that William and his team have been putting together now for some years. So we're going to unveil these cars one by one and uh, William Metcalf, owner of Vintage Bentley, is going to talk you through them all. William, welcome back to Sun Premium. Good morning everybody. Thank you for coming. Some familiar faces. Uh, as uh, David says, this is uh, completely unique. Uh, a little touch on our history. Uh, almost 30 years uh, we've been in business restoring and rebuilding the finest vintage Bentleys in the world. Uh, we've also managed to uh, sell quite some historic cars over that time. So we're very privileged and um, honoured to bring these cars here today. And we call it the ultimate collection. It is really the uh, the finest of Mr. Bentley's engineering and, and work. And if we open the first car runner, uh, this is a 1925 Bentley Super Sports. They only made 18 of these cars. Each of them came with a written guarantee to do 100 miles an hour. And that was in 1925. Out of those uh, 18 cars, uh, there are only four left with original coachwork. So all of the bodywork is original. The leather in the car and the back of the seats is all original. And this is unrestored. This is a preservation class uh, category car. 
and they are so rare and so unique so to have one here today is fantastic and it starts us off beautifully into the collection which if we move along the second car here is a 1930 four and a half litre Bentley no ordinary Bentley if anybody you see the the, uh, the Netflix series uh, Peaky Blinders this belongs to the landlord of the Southampton Arms what the, uh, the landlord's doing walking into a Mayfair showroom ordering a brand new Bentley God only knows uh, but he did. Unfortunately, he didn't keep up with payments on the car, so Bentley Motors repossessed the car. So it had a bit of an interesting first, first uh, five years of its life. It was then bought by one family and it stayed within that family up until just a few years ago. So uh, nearly 80 years of ownership with one family. Again, this is preservation glass. A lot of the leather in the car is original, original body covering, some of the original finishes, and on the engine still the fact one of the factory seals. So it's incredible, it's, it stands as a testament and a benchmark for this model. So this is a real reference car. And again, it fits beautifully into our preservation. Then moving along, the mighty Speed 6, Mr. Bentley's uh, favorite creation. So this uh, we've restored completely. This was a, um, another American Concours recently, David. And um, it's a 100 point car and this has had absolutely everything done. So there is a, a beautiful example of our preservation work and also our restoration work. So the one new, this was delivered to Vicamp Mandeville. There was only two cars built uh, to this specification. And to homologate the racing at Le Mans, the uprated Speed 6 engine, this was effectively engine number one in this car here. So it is an absolute rocket, four people and luggage. You can put it in top gear, pull away, and it'll take you to 100 miles an hour. So really something quite special. Moving on, here we have the 1925 Le Mans team car. So this, uh, after the win at 1924, W. Bentley knew that he had to go racing. Uh, and this is the very car that he built to take on the 1925 Le Mans. So drivers were uh, Kensington Moyer and Dr. Benjafield. And then you know your motoring history and Bentley connections, they're quite some, some significant names. This car we've restored actually twice in the last 20 years. Uh, it's raced all over the world, it goes everywhere. Uh, managed to pedal it to a seven minute lap around the wall last year. So it's an absolute dream. Beautiful, I love this one. I don't want to sell that one, don't bother. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> uh, over here, the fastest pre-war Bentley uh, ever built in period. The chairman of the company, Mr. Wolf Bernardo himself, uh, he wanted the bragging rights for the outright record of Brooklyn's. Uh, that they built the Monato Hassan. It's recorded as being the most expensive car that ever ran at Brooklyn's. Um, Oliver Bertrand was the driver, and its fastest ever lap was 133.6 miles an hour. And that is an average lap, so on the straights is over 150 miles an hour. You'll notice this lovely snorkel that sits out the front. You've got a three inch pipe with 140 mile an hour wind pressure blowing on the car wreckers. So it's atmospherically supercharged, which is just mind-boggling but at 143 mile an hour she's a real handful yeah. so the five cars together represent the ultimate collection we have a, a sports car a touring car a grand tourer a lamore car and a brooklyn's car a three litre four and a half six and a half eight litres so we're cutting across every model and every genre that you could ever dream of so it really is the ultimate collection which we are launching here today for the first time no one else has seen it in the world you guys and girls get the, get the first dibs, which is wonderful. Paul's just become official um, UK partner for what lies underneath here. So it's a bit of a move away from the uh, motorbikes and everything else you see in the marquees. Um, but Paul, let you unveil the uh, the new Microlina. Okay, so um, yeah, we're, we're a business about um, having fun. Um, transport should be fun, uh, vehicles should be fun. Um, motorcycles in many, many cities are good urban transport but in this country we have a weather that um, today David you've got brilliant weather but it's not always good so um, we're, we're now working with Microlino which is um, this new city car electric city car um, it's very cool it's very cute um, it's ultimately great fun to drive and that's what our business is about passion the notes I was given for this said that it would carry two people and three crates of beer yes that is the official line <laughs> how would you not want to be involved in a vehicle that can do that or two 
two people and three grates of champagne, whichever way you look at it. But this is, uh, they say it was born in Switzerland, raised so, in Italy, wasn't it? So, yeah, so, so born in Switzerland um, from the guys that came up with the micro scooter um, 20 odd years ago. Uh, and their mission in the world is to provide good urban transport. It's designed to cross park. It's designed to enter and exit from the front. Um, it's uh, available in two versions as a quadricycle. So it's available as a, as a 17 year old uh, up standard license vehicle, 56 miles an hour. Um, or it's available for a 16 year old as an L6 quadricycle, 30 miles an hour on a moped or a CBT license. A little bit about me, I, I started the company not only three years before we came to our first Salon Privé, so we started in a shipping container with a credit card and I was 23 years old with my young team. Um, four years later, and we're here again uh, with uh, one of our latest toys. Uh, this is to celebrate the launch of our Dubai outlet. So this is a Triumph Bonneville Bobber. We're ambassadors of, of the Triumph factory, so we lean on British engineering, British built, and uh, we have a small team in Milton Keynes where we engineer and manufacture everything. So this is a cross between a cruiser and what would be like an old school desert sled, uh, motocross style Dakar bike. Uh, so something a little bit different to what we usually build, something a bit crazy and uh, something a bit wacky. And we built it for an event that we'll be heading to next uh, next month. We'll be racing on the uh, sands of Margate. Uh, on the beach, so uh, something a little bit different and um, yeah, something that will uh, hopefully catch the eye of uh, some of our clients and customers this weekend and uh, yeah, hopefully Stunt is out and uh, we can uh, have a good time. The Concord of all the cars in the Concord of are for sale and um, a lot of the brands here today are actually launching cars for sale, so they've been putting special collections together and holding special cars back for this very event. So, William, Bill Moss. Good morning, welcome to Salon Prime. Morning, thank you. Yeah, it's quite a, a special car, this one that we've had um, in the works for a little while now, behind the scenes. Um, it's a car that we restored uh, for a client of ours, um, and it's now coming up for sale after being enjoyed for, for a good few years. Um, Matt, I'll let you take the cover off so everyone can have a look. <laughs> so Hilton Moss, um, the Mercedes-Benz brand, is, is, is one of the big, big parts of our restoration facility. Um, we've had a relationship with Mercedes-Benz as a manufacturer for for over 40 years now. This car was restored completely in-house, um, from the panel work, to the paint work, to the engine, to the interior, to the trim. The whole lot's done um, under one roof in our um, Bishop Stalford UK facility. Um, and we're also debuting the, the ski rack on the back, which is an authentic Mercedes-Benz, genuine um, part. It was an optioning period. Um, although not skiing time of year, it does look quite cool. <laughs> and something to see. But yes, we've had a long-standing relationship with Mercedes-Benz brand, and this car's yeah, now for sale, launching today not been seen for quite a few years. This was a 150 mile an hour supercar in this day, wasn't it? Exactly that. They were, I mean, they were hugely, um, hugely advanced car of their period. You know, the, the, the rival, the coupe, the, this car's sister car, the coupe was the, the fastest um, production car at the time. Yeah. And equally the first uh, mass produced direct injection engine as well. So hugely advanced um, and smooth and easy car to drive as well. Yeah. These two Lamborghini Countaches from Furlonger are the, the yin and yang. You've got the black with the white interior and the white with the black interior. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then make sure you hit the like button. It's very important. Plus, comment, share, and make sure you're subscribing. <laughs>
check this out guys it's my book it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you it's a fun political action thriller it's full of cool cars and spectacular action get your copy now at amazon.com